Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all uh, to the webcast today. My name is Kristen, and uh, I'm with Synergist Technologies. Just so everybody is aware and you're attending where you want to be, this is uh, the webcast is See How to Connect Any Project Data, Communication, and Your Entire Project Team with BIM 360 Team. The webinar is uh, slated for an hour. Our presenter today is Caesar from Autodesk. He joins us to present. And just a quick mention that you can type some questions in the, um, the questions tab on your uh, window pane there, but we would like to hold those till the end. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Caesar. Great, thanks Kristen. Hi everybody, I'm Caesar West. I'm with Autodesk based here in Toronto and happy to be here today to talk about BIM 360 team. And I hope for the next hour, uh, this can be a quite engaging uh, opportunity to see one of the cloud services that Autodesk offers. Um, I won't only touch into BIM 360 team, but I'll highlight some of the other functionality that's soon to come that'll integrate with BIM 360 team as well. So happy to be here today. Uh, hopefully <laughs> you'll definitely get some great value out of this next 40 to 45 minutes. One of the things with team and the cloud strategy, uh, you may have heard Autodesk talk about the future of making things in this era of connection. And I don't want to get into some verbose, grandiose kind of idea, but realistically, uh, I was of the design mindset uh, before joining Autodesk years and years ago. Uh, and things have certainly changed since I used to be in the industry. Um, thinking worldwide, or you know, even if you're located in one specific area on the East Coast, or one specific area in Europe or wherever you might reside, um, you, there's more than you out there. Uh, for example, for every one person, like myself, yourself, when we're creating data inside of Revit or AutoCAD or making a Microsoft document, for every one of us, there's typically about seven people that need to see that data. And those seven people uh, might be the stakeholders, might be your clients for facilities, um, certainly the construction folks, the owner themselves. So for every one, there's seven people that need to see the data. So this is a big kind of idea, but it's quite realistic. And overall, think about how you deliver uh, this data that you guys create. Um, some folks use email. There are built systems today that help to communicate your ideas forward like a SharePoint. Uh, the very most fundamental way of delivering ideas is through network drives and FTP sites and wide area networks. Um, more and more we're seeing this cloud storage capability. This one specifically on the, on the basic cloud storage, this is where it's becoming like the wild, wild west of data delivery. And um, things are going to, hopefully the dust is going to settle at some point soon. But we're going to really differentiate between basic cloud storage versus what Autodesk offers within the BIM 360 platform. But here, you know, here we are today. And I've gone through all of these myself, even within the life of Autodesk. I used many of these uh, applications right here. And that's within my own office delivery. Now, one of the arguments, um, or many of the arguments we're putting forward with BIM 360 team is why should you replace some of these items? Um, let's take a look at them really explicitly and see which ones really hit home, specifically for design. And that's what, I, what I'm really going to focus on, right? Um, I, I like to think of this a little bit backwards. Uh, I, I like jumping to the back of the book and reading forward, let's say. And these three items right here are, are the lowest hanging fruit as to why design doesn't fit into those collaboration tools listed above. There's no built-in design process. There's no model reviewer. There's no design review. And those things are compounded by the other three columns to the left um, to really help the team. And <clears throat> when you think about grabbing your files, are you sure that the files are the latest of the greatest? Are they version 6? Are they ver version 6, 
final, 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 right? So think about uh, the semantics that we go through uh, trying to manage our projects overall. And so in the end, these standard tools don't resolve our design pain. So our design pain being design, engineering, architecture, construction, subcontractors. Think about uh, the number of times that it might happen where there's some kind of a miscommunication inside of this, right? So maybe they don't have a version of Revit that they can open your file up. Maybe they don't have a version of AutoCAD that they can you open up the AutoCAD file just to look at the files. So how, how are some of these people looking or not looking at files? Um, so they're limiting themselves. The loss of information, this could be, uh, you know, we weren't working on, and you know, loss of information kind of ties to these other pieces right here. We weren't working on the latest set or we weren't working from the latest set of drawings as it related to our construction or, you know, uh, sending out an architectural file to a structural engineer and the architect through the client request needed to move um, some walls or some grid lines. You know, that loss of information because it wasn't necessarily transferred over expedited to the, the structural engineer causes delays. It causes rework on a digital side with, within the design side, but it can be more expensive on the rework side for the engineer or for the uh, contractor. And then a loss of either dollars or euros or yens or whatever your currency is of choice, um, that's what it all leads up to. And BIM 360 team, it is a component. It is not the all and, and uh, it's not the be all and end all for any kind of communication, but within the Autodesk cloud strategy, BIM 360 team is a great component that resides specifically and for design. So it helps to connect the design teams. It helps to take those teams and those teams offer up their insights, connecting those people together. Uh, whenever we're connecting people and insights together, we can help to collect, uh, connect the outcomes and the delivery. So BIM 360 team has been around probably for about a couple of years now, and it can work and can be subscribed to autonomously. So you can subscribe, when I'm saying subscribe, meaning you can purchase uh, the subscription of BIM 360 team by itself, and you can start getting this communication from AutoCAD through to team from Revit through to team, through Microsoft Word documents, Navisworks files, through to team. Here's some of the features, um, and we're gonna take a deeper dive with hands-on to the product itself, but here's some of the some of the basic features that I really want to cover uh, and highlight. Project-centric, yeah, I think that's a given. Remember that last, the bullet slides where I said, the conventional means of communication, like, standard cloud storage, they don't allow for us as a marketplace to do 2D or 3D review. And it certainly doesn't necessarily allow us to do that with design markup. Now one of the fundamental differentiators that Autodesk holds with BIM 360 team versus anything else that's out there, we uh, as Autodesk allow you to host DWG, Revit file as the two main core production tools that are out there. Those files can be hosted directly on team to which design markup and 2D or 3D review can take place. So imagine that. So think about if today, just during design, never, never mind about contractual drawings, okay? Just think about in your workflow today for design, are you sharing PDF files with your consulting, I'll call it your consulting supply chain, so that your consultants can actually review your design um, and mark it up. In some cases, I know that many folks are creating PDF files. In some cases, they're you know sending out full-on DWGs, like sending them, hoping that the consultants are using either Revit or AutoCAD. But with Team, the nice thing about it is when you host this DWG or Revit file natively up to that site, 
team will actually allow that viewing markup capability on the native file without having to create a PDF file. And the nice thing about that is these comments, which I'll show here in a second, um, these comments stay historical to the file itself. So if you have sheets in Revit, team will expand the view of the Revit file and show you the native sheets involved with that Revit file. Another nice thing uh, that we have within Team is called Live Review. And Live Review really takes on uh, one, of our comp one of our competitors' uh, features quite nicely. So Live Review is a DWG or a Revit file, some kind of a file. It doesn't have to be either one of those, but I like using these two because they're the native files to which I would work. When I put those up into the Team, and I'm using my desktop computer right here. When I have my model open or my drawing open, either one, I can grab a hyperlink from this site of Live Review, and then I'll send that hyperlink, for example, over to Kristen. And I'll say, hey, I'll, I'll send it to her by email. I'll say, hey, Kristen, uh, let's get on the phone at 11 o'clock, and I'm going to... Um, show you the model that I've been working on or show you the drawing that I've been working on and we can do a live review of this model. We'll use our telephone as the audio piece of this but the screen as I rotate the model or as I mark up the drawing sheet, Kristen will see this on her whatever like her iPad, her Android device, her, um, her desktop computer and the live review is that screen sharing mechanism where we can both do markup and view the exact same model at the exact same time. It is awesome because now we can do this without having to set up a go-to meeting. We can do it very impromptu um, and we can notify people directly through some of the windows that's inside of Team to say, hey, get on this live review with me right now, please. And the nice thing about Team is, you know, here's a little bit of a geek factor for you. Um, it's really driving an enhanced Navisworks engine in the background. It's, it's built for the cloud, but this enhancement allows, like Navisworks, virtually any file format uh, to come up and be viewed natively within the team environment. So the 3D modeling capabilities, um, seeing those models throughout team is great, and virtually on any device too. So keep in mind, this is a web-based uh, application and this is where web-based applications can be seen through any web browser or virtually any web browser that supports the, um, uh, the 3D OpenGL um, capabilities. I use Chrome. I'm using a Surface uh, tablet. and Sometimes I use Edge. So it's up to you. And whether you're using a MacBook or something like that, whatever that web browser is there, as long as it open, uh, supports the OpenGL, you're good to go. Specifically on iOS, uh, we support an iOS app both for the iPad and for the uh, iPhone. And within the iOS app, it carries a little bit more strength behind it as well. And that is basically that uh, you can go offline. So with the iOS app, go online or go offline and take models with you out into the field. So sometimes you won't have the cell data over here on the left-hand side or if you don't have a built-in um, uh, sell your package with your iPad, that's okay. You can go offline, take your models, mark them up, go into the field, and then when you come back and you synchronize your iPad, uh, basically connect to a Wi-Fi, that synchronization will automatically push the information back up to the cloud. The nice thing about the design, uh, you should see it here on the screen, the tools are practically identical in their use and look across each platform, which is a nice thing. So when you learn how to use one, you should be able to move seamlessly from one to another uh, without having to relearn the, end, the entire platform. So here is, um, it's a little bit of a chart, but it really helps to simplify the understanding of 360 services. So I made this as a, as a helper tool for some clients. And in this case here, I thought it'd be great to show it to you guys today. 
whenever you go to the Autodesk.com website, it becomes a little bit challenging to find out what are the cloud services overall. We've got a laundry list of them that come out, but let me simplify it for you. Anything that's listed as 360, that means cloud to Autodesk. So 360 equals cloud. There are free viewers within the A360 viewer and A360 drive. And this entire length from here over to here is, <coughs> excuse me, is meant to be a life cycle of a project. Now within that life cycle, you can use the free viewer and you typically have access to A360 drive. Anybody can have an A360 drive account. Most typically when you bought Autodesk software through the maintenance subscription, you would have A360 drive accounts uh, available to anybody. And these, what I usually say to rec and recommend <clears throat> to our customers, please see A360 drive as your personal cloud account. Don't, I would recommend, you can obviously use it for whatever, whatever you wish, but I don't recommend that you use your purse, this A360 drive account for business applications. Uh, I had one example where a customer, um, uh, customer had an employee who left and was using this A360 drive as the corporate account to store, you know, Revit families, AutoCAD blocks, <clears throat> styles, and so on. And then they left, and the A360 drive account is tied to your, it's typically tied to a single sign-on email address. So if it's caesar.ruess at autodesk.com and I leave, you know, I can still, I still hold title to that password and login, so I can still use my account even though I'm not, you know, part of that company anymore. <clears throat> so my recommendation is keep this as a personal. I'll show you ways uh, today on how to move stuff from Drive to BIM 360 team. And use team, BIM 360 team, for your corporate users as it relates to project delivery. So let me clean this up a little bit here and just take a moment. So we are here today to talk about BIM 360 team. This is where you can subscribe to team quite effectively for a year at 120 bucks, and it's basically like 10 bucks a month for a user. It starts at 500 gigabytes for storage. And the nice thing about Team is you can pool the hubs together. So when you buy Team, you basically you're buying a hub and you're subscribing to it for a month, you know, three months, maybe a year. The discounted price for subscription is at a year. And the people that need to get it are the people that need to access Team. And this is a big change. BIM 360 team, anybody that needs to see the files in team, comment, redline markup, uh, get them from your iPad and so on, they all need to have a license of team. There's a difference that just took place February 1 of this year. And I'll kind of explain this here in a second. So BIM 360 team, like I said, today if all of us were brand new to team, it's a moot point. It's, you know, it's irrelevant to discuss the February 1 um, date because we would all be new to team and we would all have to buy a subscription to team and then we could all use the sites and we could all go on each other's sites uh, when we're invited to go to the sites. So I can invite any of you to come to my site and vice versa, but we are all uh, licensed with team. The February 1 date becomes important for any people um, that have been using Team but invited to other people's site without a license. Because before February 1st, if I had my Team site, I could invite you know all of you, uh, all of your mothers and all of your pets names to my Team site and you could all contribute, view my files, um, you know, your mother would want, be wondering, why is Caesar doing a lot of stuff with red pens on his drawings? Um, but everybody would be free to come onto my site to view, and you'd be all be able to comment and mark up and so on. So because you were invited to my site before February 1st, you have until February 1st, 2018 now, 
to still be free, but when Feb 1, 2018 comes around, uh, that's when the door gets closed and you people as free would then have to subscribe to Team to continue to use my site. And of course, <laughs> you would no longer buy a license for your mother and dog and you would only buy the licenses for yourself to become part of my Team site. So that's the milestone date. Uh, that's just more of an FYI for anybody that's out there. So let's go through this. <clears throat> team you can buy on its own. Collaboration for Revit, which is a direct integration with Revit and Team. You know, you want to open up files directly from Team in Revit, you need collaboration for Revit. It's also heard within the industry as C4R. It's included, Team's included in C4R. The price point for that is $800, but in this case here, you're using Revit directly and you're using central file capabilities in Revit to do uh, direct tying into other firms with central files, irrelevant of where they are geographically. So CFR goes past firewalls. It allows simultaneous usage of the Revit file by multiple people at the same time. CFR is basically king of the central file technology as it relates to Revit and cloud. So C4R includes team, but we're not talking about C4R today. We're only gonna focus on team. And this is where the, the line in the sand really gets drawn. Team, for the most part, is for design. It really is. It's meant for fast, iterative changes in the design process. So you know, and I'm gonna draw like these curves, you make lots of design changes, and each one of these curves is a design change, design change, design change, and you know you're you're slowly you're making less and less design changes as you start to come up towards construct, construction drawings, and eventually somebody stamps those drawings, and this is where we see the BIM 360 platform split off into these other services, the contractual documents from this point forward we see them best utilized in an application called Docs. So from contractual standpoint, Docs allows RFIs to be created from contractors and subcontractors, and it has a workflow around RFIs. It has a heavy investment in PDF, as well as Revit, as well as DWG. And Docs <clears throat> is meant for this wider supply chain of people, like the subs, the contractors, and so on, because they need to see the PDF drawings and make RFI questions based on um, the constructability of your building. And these other services are BIM 360 services, uh, to which we're really not going to talk to today, but that keep that in mind. If there's anything that you guys need to do from a design or construction standpoint, look for Autodesk, let's have a discussion around our 360 services because they're really quite fantastic on the delivery of design and then the delivery on construction. And here's where we get um, this, this is here's where we get um, a better idea. So this is the A360 team. This is your personal account free one project five gigabytes of stage of storage basic viewing and sharing bim 360 team 10 bucks a month when you're bait when you're buying it for an annual subscription 500 gigabytes of storage which can be pooled so if you buy five five licenses of team as an administrator i recommend administrators pool the data sometimes and then dole out you know give out each license to each person of the five. And that way there, as a project, as a company project site, you can have many projects, unlimited projects, under your main hub, which would be 2.5 terabytes worth of storage. You'll never run out of data, like quite frankly. Um, user access control, administrative panel, and so on. We're not talking about Fusion Team. Uh, that's more for our manufacturing counterparts overall. So if you'd like to see some examples of success stories, I'm not going to go through these ones in specific detail. Mori Yamatoshima that's here in my um, town of Toronto. They've been using Team for quite a while, quite successfully. Um, this, I think the success story is probably about a year and a half, two years old right now. 
Um, and another one here, Bush Bowman, another architect that I'm familiar with, uh, using team. And in this case here, they're using it on fast track projects. So they see the value of, of pushing this information and communicating it out to their sites overall. <clears throat> so let's dig into it right here. So BIM 360 team takes the idea that you have data being created already and you're going to be uploading these files uh, to the cloud site for everybody to share. So let's get familiar with the interface because this whole presentation now becomes one of, let's, becomes one of learning the interface a little bit, seeing the value propositions and seeing the ease of use behind it as well. So right here at the very top right is my handsome, my, my handsome mug. Uh, these are the different team sites. They look like little snowflakes. Uh, these are the team sites that I'm invited to and being part of. So I'm in my skyscraper site. That's, you know, it's in blue right now. But these other team sites are hubs. Team skyscraper, this is the hub name. So when you're investing in these five licenses of team, and I said you could pool them together, your company site, your company name would be up here. The projects for your company are right here. So we're on this one hub. These are the projects inside of this hub. You can see when I go to my other, this is my own personal hub. It's going to come back and show me different projects. Actually, no projects, <laughs> so there we go. I guess I didn't do a lot of work in that side of that hub. So let's go back to Skyscraper because it's got, <laughs> it's got the stuff that I want to show you. So the activity on the right is dealing with everything happening inside of this hub, not just the one project. Uh, if you're scrolling through, if you're dealing with these five projects and you see something that's of interest right here, you can just click on it and it'll jump right to that activity within that project. Now let, let me dig into this one project here called R2017 Skyscraper. Getting familiar with this, we have activities and details specific now to this folder, uh, which is this project. So under the details, you can see we've got 15 files, we've got four, we have four uh, man, uh, users within here. And the activity specifically within this site is now here. You can see that there was a discussion happening here. So uh, 42 minutes ago, Caesar said, this is where we'll make the decisions. And uh, this user called Merck said he would apply, uh, would be in attendance. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how we go through discussions, uh, how to put files up here quite easily. The view of this project is in a list view. And this is listing out all the project names. That's these two buttons right here. And sometimes you want the list view to help sort by most recent. You know, when you click on the columns to sort things out. Sometimes you prefer the, the, um, the tiled view so that you can get a, a view image of the file in question. You see a lot of different things now within each of the tiled views. So for example here, uh, this file is on version 2. This one's on version 1, version 1. You see the names of the files here itself. This file, if you hover over top long enough, you see the full file name, FOMT without Jimmy Kimmel. This is a one gigabyte zip file. So there are no limitations to how big your file needs to be or can be on team. There's no limitations. We don't limit you on team. If you find that if you find that you come across something that's limiting you, uh, based on file size, it's usually not us on our back end limiting the uh, the file size capabilities. But when, right within Team, this is the heart of it. You would view this file. Uh, you can share this file directly. You can download it, or you can move it or delete it. So let's dig into the heart of what Team's all about: viewing files.
and there's no bandwidth while I'm you know while I'm waiting for this um, there's my taskbar it's loading up the file right now it's going to turn green here as it progressively loads um, there's no limitation on internet bandwidth uh, whatever bandwidth you have is great uh, likely these days I doubt anybody's still on 56k modems um, as far as the the browsers I've, I've not loaded anything else in the browser we do uh, adaptive degradation to help rotate the building. If you were on a, a computer maybe with less uh, video card or RAM capabilities, because even though we're using a browser, we still have to use some RAM to pull this uh, stuff in just for viewing capabilities. So we'll degrade the model a little bit so that you can view it and rotate it efficiently. But the, within, the, within the idea of this pane now, my recommendation is once you click on a file, rather than start playing with it right off the bat, I recommend that you go to the overview button right here and see what's been going on within the context of this file. So within the overview button, this is where, let me move this out of the way here. This is where you get to see, okay, it's got one view. It has nine sheets. This is a Revit file. Right? This is a native Revit file. It's on version two. Um, here's the date and who uploaded this file. You can view any of these sheets now because Team basically extrapolates the models and the sheets as a published view. So back in Revit, when you're in Revit and you create a published view of a model, those published sheet sets will come through into Team for people to start looking at. So for example, here, the second floor uh, framing. So within the idea of the second floor framing, what do you want to do at this point now? So I can grab my markup tool and with any of these friendly tools right here, I can go ahead and start marking up. I can also add some annotation to this um, right there and then I can save this out so this becomes a markup within the context of this sheet and it gets saved out there's also the ability to make specific comments so the markups have one type of power um, it becomes very visual and it's not necessarily meant to hold like a conversation going on here. Comments are a little bit different. You can combine the two, right? There's no reason why you can't combine a markup with a comment, but the comments are very, um, very specific because you can, you see my crosshair. My crosshair says, I want to put in a comment, for example, right here, or, you know, I can let it live out in space by itself if I want to talk about this column or if I'm asking about this box, like I'll drop it here. And I can say, like, uh, what is this? At. As soon as I put the at sign, this is where the comment, as it relates to this drawing, as it relates to this location, you can direct this comment to one of the project team members. So I'm not going to bug any of my colleagues here. I'll send it to this clown, Caesar. Um, what is this? At Caesar West. So it doesn't just post it to my site. You can see how it does a little bit of a, of a thumbnail. So you see this screen, this entire screen from left to right, it includes that as a thumbnail view with a red dot as to where this comment takes place. And when you go back, remember I said go back to the overview? The overview then holds the red line markup as well as the comment specifically. And you can see how it's tagged to me or to this other user. We have two users in this, Caesar the project manager and Caesar the uh, project engineer. And so in this case here, we're starting basically like a conversation. Now this hits my email. This literally goes to my email address and I can respond to it directly from my email address. The one nice thing about the, the tools from here to your email is that they're reciprocal. So from my email, I did this with another example. Um, comments, when you're doing the at sign, they're reciprocal from email back into team. So for example here, 
Uh, I started this thread just before uh, this morning at 9.55, and I can say, hey, um, reply at Caesar. So I'm going to send it to my Gmail account. Um, when are you arriving? And post. So this will ping my Gmail account in this case here because um, that's what this uh, person's associated with. And coming out to my Gmail, here's where the email kind of comes in, right? And we can respond back to, to this right from Gmail. When I respond, uh, 6 p.m. today with a few question marks and send. This will stay as common threads in team. So you're really quite powerful now in tying in together critical uh, connecting um, two systems together of our cloud service and this other service here too within team. The calendar item, this is another nice part of it. So the discussions, we just talk, talked about that. The calendar item, this is a nice piece of functionality. From here, you can add, as you would expect, uh, lunch is my favorite activity of the day uh, from 11 until uh, 12.45, no, no, 1 o'clock. Uh, location, blah, 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 and create. Now, anybody that's a team member uh, will receive this calendar invitation. Uh, I think I made an invitation on another site, uh, which is not here, but it'll show up as a calendar invitation here. It'll also get emailed to Gmail and so on. So if, when I come back into my Gmail account or even Outlook, I think I've got one here for Outlook. Here it is right here. So here's what it looks like. I just received this from A360 team. Oh yeah, by the way, we had a naming convention from A360 to BIM 360 team. So, you know, our marketing is faster than us being able to change our own products sometimes. So A360 team was renamed in November of last year to BIM 360 team. They're one and the same. They are the same. Um, so this is what it looks like. You can see my email calendar invite also comes through as a calendar invite that I can save to my Outlook or Gmail calendar. Marketing meeting downtown. Yes, accept it, go. So let's go back to, so we saw discussions, calendar, let's go back to the data and let's jump to a rich site. Um, Oh, the wiki page too. That was the last thing I wanted to show you is the wiki page. So coming into uh, Skyscraper one more time, the wiki page can be used for more project information. Uh, it's built in. It's a standard line item for team. And you start building out new wiki pages. What I recommend this to be used for is for new hires. So if you have a new hire and you're saying, hey, go to the wiki page on team, you'll find where all the files are located, the families, the standards, the contracts, uh, you know, everything dealing with this project. So you can build a wiki page talking about file locations and you can add hyperlinks within this wiki page. Uh, coming back to the wiki page, you can build wikis out with meeting notes. So this meeting note was really meant to show the flexibility of the wiki page. You can paste in images. You, then you can start typing in the meeting notes like in attendance, the owner, the joint venture partner, and Tom's dog. You see how I highlighted some stuff? So you can format the text quite nicely with dashes and bullet points and so on. And it's all nested within the project. Now let's dig into this hospital project because there's one really sweet thing that you have to see. Uh, and it it's literally the best thing since sliced bread. Um, I have this very intense project. It's a, um, it's a hospital kind of uh, research facility. And I've been working on it. You can see there's different pictures. There's a JPEG of my hospital uh, down here, right here. This is a Microsoft document relating to this project. There's an Excel spreadsheet relating to this project. These are also viewable <clears throat> natively inside of Team. <clears throat> you can't mark them up specifically inside of here, but you can view it as the native file and we'll track the versioning behind it. So for example, if I needed to change this Word document, I would download it first. That's what these buttons are for here, download. 
You can do a comment thread as well on this. Remember like I did the comment on the drawing with the little push pin? Same thing here, but then when we upload the next version, it'll version up to the next uh, Microsoft document uh, on team. This is what I wanted to show you right here is this hospital. This is on version four. Let's dig into it. <clears throat> So it's just loading up version four. Remember I said, whenever you first open up a file, your best way to get a sense of the progress of this file is to click on the overview button for it. So let's jump to the overview. Version four. Version four has five comments. One, two, three, four, five. Version three, I wanna show you this in version three of this file. Uh, there was a comment thread that took place here. So let's dig into that. So I'm at about 20, 20 minutes to the hour. Um, I know I'm going to be stopping probably within the next five minutes. Just as a preemptive strike for you folks, if there are questions that you feel that I have not answered and that, you, that you'd like to get an answer for, um, and it doesn't, you don't get the sense that I'm going to be answering it now, type that into the Q&A dialogue panel. Get started on typing in that comment now because i got about five minutes left, and that way there I'm not going to be catch, catching you at the last minute. Um, so here, uh, this is the red line markup. You saw how I did red line markup. The first part of this red line markup was this person named Caesar said, hey, would you add the wall and the door in the corridor right here? and move the exam room walls. So take these walls and move them over like this. This is so typical architecture in a red line markup kind of situation, right? Um, so this could have been this architect uh, using his phone, because you can do this right from your phone or your iPad. And this uh, project manager said, I approve this move. And this Revit user down here, we're all named Caesar, but says, okay. So I would leave this BIM 360 team window open on one screen. I would launch Revit on another screen. I would go ahead and make the changes and then I would save it and upload that file. So from Revit, because I'm only using BIM 360 team, I have to click on save and then I have to click, I have to upload the file manually. So whenever I do that, I'm pretending I'm the project manager uh, or the project uh, architect or the architect involved specifically at, as a principal, I want to take a look at what took place here. And this is where you can use the compare versions feature within this. And within the compare version, this is where I'm going to see version, for, version 4 versus version 3 at the ground floor and compare. So it's just loading up between the two. It's loading up the two drawings right now. I'm looking at the taskbar. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we're going to come up with show me the difference. It's loading up the second one. This feature, like I said, has got to be the best thing since sliced bread because it is showing the evidence difference between the two files at an object level with respect to Revit. That's a lot. That is huge. So these are not just pretty colors. These are live buttons. Whenever you say, I want to, don't show me the 14 modified Revit objects, turn them off. Oh, there's, okay, there are the two things that were added. And when you look down here, it added or Caesar added a basic wall and a door. The modification types, though, are really quite compelling. So taking a look at these modifications, when I'm at a program level of a, of a hospital or a research facility, I want to know programmatically version 4, oh, it gained 36 square feet. What was it in version 3? 
that's huge. So at an object level, because there's space objects from Revit, we can then compare our spatial objects here right through Team without having to open up Revit. And the nice thing about Team is not that it just goes across architecture, but it also goes across elements of comparison for structure, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical. Very, very powerful. Even if you move like this, this gurney, you move this gurney, it's a modification, right? And it knows that it's a move, so it'll come back and highlight for you. Very powerful there. You know, all is not lost for those people that are not on team. So for example, if somebody needed to see this file and it's just more of a, like a one-off where, you know, I've got a colleague and they say, hey, Caesar, how is your project going? And I can say, it's going not too bad. I can share this with them with a link. So I would copy this link and I would email it to them. If I really want to lock down the team site, like really lock it down, I could require sensitive files, require a password uh, to also access files. Not just to access links, but to access from files as well. So the copy link feature is, is built within Team, but the live review feature is, is the one that I was touting during the PowerPoint presentation. So live review, when you launch it, it'll take that live review, it'll launch a brand new uh, window inside of your uh, browser. It initiates a live session. It'll bring the file into that live session. You log in, start. It's launching that file. This is the link that I was talking about. So I would copy this link and then I would send this over to Kristen and whoever else that needed to be part of this live review. Copy and link copied. And now the live has a little red button to say, okay, I am currently live. Turn off that button because you don't want to see that link anymore. And here's where you'd start, you know, if Kristen was logging in, she would show up as a person underneath here. And now we could use the different tools accessible to us. So we could measure, we could still touch objects specifically within, ob within uh, Revit environment here, like we're touching on a space. We can go and check out the properties of this space. You know, this is 976, 79 square feet, <clears throat> and so on. This is a door. So the live review is quite, quite fantastic overall. Uh, when you're done, you just smash it closed, and you close that browser window. Let's leave that page and go back to here. And what I'll do right now, let's, um, let me pause there and let me see if um, I'll ask Kristen to come back on the line. And while we're doing this, please feel to type in any other questions that we want to go through uh, for teams. So Kristen, are you still there? I am, yes. Cool. Any questions in the queue? I do not see any questions in our queue. Nope, there's nothing okay. that I see in the queue at the moment. Okay, no worries. We'll give you a few more minutes if you wanted to type something in. Feel free to type something in. Uh, I'll just keep talking about some different features here within Team. So to invite people, uh, inviting project members, you can also see that if you have a hub, if you are part of a, a corporate, if you're part of your corporate um, entity, and you have people inside of your office on Team, and if you have multiple team hubs, they can browse to see the hub. They can see it, but they can't access it. So you might get requests from other team, from other project members to say, I want to join your hub because you know I've been asked to participate on this project. Uh, but inviting people is simple as invite. You would type in the, um, the people that you'd want to invite, and then you're going to set them to a specific role. And within the roles, you have it's again it's meant to be it's meant to be easy you have viewers you have editors and then you have project admins most typically when you have uh, team players you'll invite them in to be editors and that keeps them out from 
project admin things like project settings, approving people in the projects and setting access levels. You know, so this is like Superman on the far right. This is uh, Lois Lane in the middle here. And then this is just, you know, everybody's best friend on the curbside. So viewing is strictly view and discuss things. You don't have that opportunity to get a link to do live reviews to edit or upload. Very, very elemental. Uh, send those invitations forward. And I think that, let me just check my notes here. There's, um, I think that's pretty much about it. Any questions, uh, Kristen? No, um, no questions. Okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll wrap it up. Thanks very much for your time coming out here today to take a look at Team. Like I said, Team is part of a bigger portfolio of products, which is the, um, the BIM 360 tools and portfolios of products. So don't mistake, um, don't mistake what you can do with Team uh, with the rest of the core offering as BIM 360. So like I said, if you want to tie Revit directly with Team and be able to open up central files from Team, C4R is your mechanism there. For contractual documents further down the road, you'd be looking at Docs or some of these other BIM 360 applications as well. So Kristen, I'll turn it back over to you to uh, wrap things up. Okay, thank you very much, Caesar. That was a lot of uh, really great information. Um, so I'm hoping everyone uh, got some good insight as to uh, the BIM series of products. Um, if there's any questions that anybody has after the, the webinar, please feel free to reach out to any one of us at Synergist. I also wanted to quickly mention that um, there will be another uh, webcast to, to kind of further this, uh, the, the, the solutions within the BIM realm, which will address BIM docs. That will be April 18th. You'll get some information on that if you guys would like to sign up for that webcast. Again, it's April 18th, and that's BIM docs. And also, I wanted to just mention as well, uh, we have our Synergist University event uh, May 17th again at the Sands in Bethlehem, and please feel free to reach out to anyone at Synergist. We thank you very much for your time, and we hope you have a great day.